In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Hope everybody had a blessed Thanksgiving and some good time with family and friends. It's always good to reflect on times when we get to you know, spend with our, our families because especially if, if you are somebody who lives away from your family or, or doesn't live in the same home for a period of time and then you come back to the home, things are always a little bit different. Right? And, and it's because as, as we grow or if we move away from home, we naturally grow into our own, own self. And, and part of that process is kind of shedding some of the scripts that we have received from our family and writing new scripts in life. And what do I mean by scripts? Scripts are something that every family has, right? It's how we choose to deal with certain things, right? So if you can reflect on your parents, I'm sure if you reflect on your parents, you know how they deal with stress or you know how they deal with finances. You know how they deal with politics. You know how they deal with sadness and grief, right? Because you've seen these things over and over as you grow up with them. And you've inherited, naturally, some of those scripts. And so what happens is that after we move away for a period of time, and then our, our scripts, we begin to rewrite them, right? We look and we say like, this is how it happened at home, but I want to do it differently. I want to live a little bit differently. I want to learn to be a little bit more even-tempered when it comes to politics. I want to learn to deal with my money a little bit differently. I want to show a bit more patience or control in these situations. So we receive scripts from our parents and from our families, and then when we move out, we begin to rewrite these scripts because we become a bit of our own person. And it's always interesting that when we go back to our families, especially in times like the holidays, right, we see or experience attention, right? Like I want to act like this, I want to conduct myself like this, but when I come back, there is something about being back at home that kind of sucks me back in to old behaviors. Or not just being at home, being with old friends that kind of sucks me back in to old behaviors that I've been trying to shed. And that's a normal thing. And while living according to these new scripts in life that we are writing for ourselves, all right, it's difficult, it's most difficult to apply it to family, but it's, it's a principle that we have to learn to apply it everywhere in life. Because as we write these new scripts, not only are we going to find tensions back at home with family and friends, but we'll also find tensions at work and with our different social groups. So as we come into our own scripts in life, right, choosing how I'm going to live, how I'm going to respond to certain situations, we're always going to find a bit of friction with those around us. And hopefully, the scripts that we are rewriting in our own lives, we're choosing to write because of our progression in our relationship with God. And God is always going to challenge us to rewrite the scripts of our lives. He's always going to challenge us on how to deal with pain or with when we're hurt by somebody, he's going to challenge us always down a road of forgiveness. And maybe forgiveness wasn't high in our family, right? Maybe we held grudges and we held them for a long time. God is trying to rewrite something for us. He's trying to show us something new. And any time we come back to a group of people that we spent a lot of our childhood with and we have changed, there's that tension. There's that disagreement on how we're going to how we're going to conduct ourselves. And it's always the ones that we go back to that kind of have this like little bit, okay, you've changed, so you're either going to have to change back for this to work or this is going to be a tough relationship. Right? It's either like, come back to what we know or I'm not sure what to do with you. All right? And that's a common thing. And it was also captured in the Pauline sorry, the Catholic epistle of today, where St. Peter was talking about how there was a change in life, not just for him, but also of Gentiles who had converted to the faith. And when they are exposed to people 
that they knew that hadn't converted, there's a tension, right? There's a tension that exists, right? And he captures it. Why are all my slides messed up? For some reason, that one didn't get in, but I have it here, all right? He says in 1 Peter 4, verses 3 and 4, For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regards to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. Right? So what is he talking about? A Gentile who has now kind of changed his ways, his, his way of life, comes back to his old Gentile buddies, and they're like, how come you're not doing this with us? How come, like, you know, this is what we used to do? Either, like, you're going to change and come back, or our friendship is going to be on, you know, on thin ice. So St. Peter captures this idea in... All right. in, the, in the Catholic epistle of today. And these changes that we make in life, as I was saying before, hopefully they're changes that God is bringing about in us. Right? God is always trying to bring about changes in us. But we have to be careful and have a litmus test for these changes in our lives, these new scripts that we're rewriting, we need to make sure that they're of God, or, because if they're not of God, we don't want to continue this change, right? Why would we want to change in a way that God doesn't want us to change? And so these different exposures where there's tension and there's friction are good because it, it challenges us to evaluate, well, how am I changing? What are the ways that I'm changing? And ask really the most important question, which is, is this change really coming from God? Right? Because what we want in our lives is change that is, is, is brought about by God. And so, in the Acts of today, there's one of my favorite you know, pearls of wisdom that comes from Gamaliel, who is one of the, the top Pharisees. And he's talking to the other Pharisees, all right, who are younger, and trying to give them advice on how to deal with Peter, who is preaching boldly about Christ. And he gives them like a couple stories and he's like, all right, you got to be careful because, you know, if this is coming from God, there's nothing you can do to stop it. But if this change, this new doctrine that is being preached is coming from man, don't worry, it's going to fizzle out, right? It's going to fizzle out. And he captures that in Acts uh, chapter 5, 38 through 39, where he says, and now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. And he, and he says in the prior verses, like, we've seen these, and here are some examples. It comes to nothing. But if it's of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest even you, lest you even be found to fight against God. And so, when we are in the process of rewriting scripts for our lives, coming into our own personhood, all right, our own identity, we have to look at these changes that are going on in our hearts and our minds. And ask this question, like, is this change coming of me in my environment, or is this change coming from God? Right? Because if it's coming from the environment, like, we kind of go through changes that kind of come and go. But if it's a true change from God, it's something that will, will grow, and if nourished appropriately, it will continue to grow in our lives. And those are the changes that we want to hold on to. Those are the changes that are worthwhile. Those are the changes that when we feel that friction with somebody else or feel that friction with somebody from our past or our families and we know like, no, th like this is a good place to be. I know it's difficult, but this is a good change that I want to continue to implement. That's what we want to hold on to, right? And only time and repeated, you know, events and intentions are going to confirm in us that like, okay, this is a good change. I need to continue this change. Right? Or if it's like, this tension doesn't seem like it's worthwhile. Maybe I've changed, but not for the good. Right? So we have to be able to look at the changes in our lives over time and say, okay, if this is from God, it's going to last and it's going to come up again. And God will reaffirm the message to us in the way we read scripture, in the way we pray, in the sermons that we hear, in the books that we read, all these different things. Like as we're kind of nourishing like good changes in our lives, we read something we're like, ah, I'm doing a good work, 
ah, I'm, I'm like, I'm not there yet, but I know I need to keep on going, right? When we get those messages that say, this is, this is a good change coming about, we need to continue to nourish them. And it's important that we nourish these because these changes are always going to be fought against by society. They're always going to be fought against, against by some of our, our old friends, some of our family members, and some of the scripts that we've you know, grown up with and grown around. Right? They're always going to challenge these changes. But this is where like, we have an important question that we have to ask ourselves. Whose voice am I going to listen to? At the end of the day, whose voice am I going to listen to? Well, we're told to honor our parents right, and give them respect. As much as our parents are loving individuals, none of them can give us the full picture of Christ. Right? Speaking as a parent, like, I love my kids and I want to do the best for them. But I know I'm doing things that hurt them. I know because of my own brokenness, my own weakness, I'm passing on things to them that I wish I didn't pass on. And every parent feels like that. Every parent feels like, I want to do the best, but like, I'm a broken individual. So naturally, I'm going to do things that hurt my kids. And, and as, as kids, like, we have to be able to see these things and say, like, okay, my parents did a great job, but they weren't perfect, and they're not perfect. And, they, and I inherited some things from them that need to be changed, right? And it's listening to this voice of God. Did I lose? It's listening. Battery. Thank you. And it's when I realize that there's certain things that need to be changed from my parents, right? That weren't passed on to me maliciously from them. They're just passed on to me because they're broken too. Just like I'm broken, they're broken, right? And I need to say like, okay, well, in this situation, God's voice has to ring true. God's voice has to be supreme in my life. And this is what St. Luke was talking about in the gospel of today. Right? In verse 14, or chapter 14, verse 26, he says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. What St. Luke is talking about here is that we're always going to be challenged in how we grow. Things that we've learned and inherited throughout our childhood are going to be challenged. And while the Bible tells us to honor our father and mother, it never tells us to do so more than honoring the Word of God. That the Word of God is to be honored above those things. Right? And this is from St. Cyril. He explains it nicely. He demands our highest affection for himself, and that very correctly. The love of God in those who are perfect in mind has something in it superior both to the honor due to the parents and to the natural affection felt for, her, felt for children. So what he's saying here is that in our own maturation as individuals, in our own spiritual growth as individuals, we're going to be challenged. And the thing that gets challenged most are the scripts and the behaviors we have learned and inherited from our parents, from our families. And while we honor them, we don't honor them more than the scripts that God is giving us. That when there's a difference between what God is teaching me and what I learned from my parents, we don't say, well, the Bible tells me to honor my parents, therefore I'm going to disregard what God is teaching me or how he wants me to grow. We say, no, 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 we honor my parents, but never more than honoring God and his word in my life. He just uses strong language that can be confusing when he says like, unless you hate father, mother, brother, and sister, like that's tough language. But when we look at it, we say like, okay, the Bible isn't there to contradict itself. It doesn't say honor your father and mother and then hate them in the next verse. Honor your father and mother. But understand, we honor God's word and what he has called us to more than honoring our parents. 
Now the true challenge is that as we grow, all right, the true test of our growth is always when we come back to our, our families. All right? That's the true test of growth. And many times, you've probably experienced this, is that we've grown and we're about to go back to an old situation or an old scenario that you're like, this never was a good situation for me. Every time I'm in here, I feel like it drags me down. And we tell ourselves, and we kind of talk to ourselves, it's all right, this time when I go back, I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna make sure I don't fall. I'm gonna make sure like I, I don't fall into the same traps that I've always done into because this is the life that I've left and this is the life that I'm working towards. But too often, we fail. And when we're around like old company and we're around old like bad habits and old scripts, sometimes we, we fall and we cave. And, and it's important to kind of understand why. Right? And, and St. Luke, in his gospel, as we kind of continue through today, it says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and, it, and is not able to finish, all who see it might begin to mock him. All right. So it's always interesting that we talk about like our families, then in the next like, chunk of verses in this Bible, we're talking about building a tower. All right? And the imagery is important because when he's talking about building a tower, he's talking about planning. He's talking about looking at everything you have and saying, okay, do I have enough to finish this project? And likewise, like, we need to have that same mindset when going back to our family or going back to old places or old like, environments that can bring the worst of us. Do we plan appropriately when we go back? Do we set, like, kind of more firm guidelines or things for us to follow in order to protect ourselves from falling into old behaviors. And I think many of us don't, and I'm victim to this, all right? I kind of go back with the mentality of saying like, well, not gonna do that. Well, I don't really set myself up to say like, okay, but I know how the conversation evolves at the dinner table when X, Y, and Z is about to happen. And I tell myself, when I know that's gonna happen, time to end my dinner a little bit early, go sit down on the couch, avoid the conversation, right? I tell myself, I speak to myself, I give myself a game plan of what am I gonna do when I see the kind of the tall tale signs of a bad situation unraveling. That's what St. Luke is talking about when he's talking about, you know, counting the cost to build the temple. We need to count the cost in affirming these new scripts that we're trying to build into our lives. All right. St. Cyril also comments on this as well. And he says, Those who chose to lead a glorious and blameless life should store up beforehand in their minds a sufficient zeal. They should remember him who says, My son, if you come close to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for every temptation. Make your heart straight and endure. How will those who do not have this zeal be able to reach the goal that is set before them? What St. Cyril is trying to emphasize in reflecting on these verses of the temple is that in our ongoing change and maturation in life, we need to capture and foster a spirit of zeal, right? And zeal is this, I, like, this emotion that it's like, I want to get this. I want to reach this end point. I see the goal and I want to reach the goal and I'm going to do everything to get the goal, right? You can equate it to somebody who's like, okay, I have an exam coming up and I really want to do well on this exam. So what do we do? We start to make tough choices. Say, I'm not going to go out here. I'm going to you know, build in more study time here. I'm going to make sure that I review this, go to the, the session. That's zeal, right? That's zeal. That's like, I want to get this done. And we have that same spiritual zeal too, that if I want to embody a certain virtue, or if I want to learn a certain script in life, a new script in life, that I'm going to have to make choices in order to protect the good work that is happening inside of me. So it might be, well, I'm gonna excuse myself from this conversation, or I'm gonna get up early when I'm at home to make sure that I have time to pray, or that when things are getting, you know, tensions arising, I'm gonna excuse myself 
to let myself calm down before I slip back into old behaviors and old patterns. So that's spiritual zeal. Spiritual zeal also t tells us and, and encourages us to make sure that as things are evolved that we're in a constant state of prayer. That as I feel like the situation arising where it's going in a, in a way that I don't want, that I'm going to say, okay, God, please help me. It's getting, it's getting hard. Give me the courage and the strength to do what I need in order to escape the situation. All these little things that we do are zeal. Zeal for the end of what we want to see, right? The virtue that we want to embody, the new script in life we want to write for ourselves. So I always love that this gospel comes, it's always right after Thanksgiving. Every Thanksgiving, we will read this gospel, right? And it's always gonna challenge us, especially after like a heavy dose of being around family and friends, it's gonna challenge us to say, okay, we need to continue on in our own personal maturation and our own personal growth. And if, you know, anytime we're with family, we're going to be challenged in that growth, which is a good thing. And we need to watch it over time because it's of God, then we need to continue. Then we need to continue fostering it and nurturing it with a spiritual zeal. And over time, and as the years go by and the different exposures happen and the tensions arise, we will learn to bring these, these new scripts into our lives and they become who we are. We embody these virtues over time. So I hope that as you're coming back from your Thanksgiving and, and kind of you know, reflecting on the weekend with family, that you have time to kind of reflect and say, okay, what was my behavior? Was, it, was I being the person that I wanted to be? Or do I have room to grow? And all of us always have room to grow. But let's identify those areas of growth and meditate on, on those areas of growth in the next minute. And glory be to God forever. Amen.